I'm the default for literally every single household in domestic tasks for my family. California's first partner visited us this week to discuss her new documentary about gender roles and how she makes things work in her high profile house. Jen Siebel Newsom, welcome back to The Issue Is, and great to see you. Thank you. It's great to see you, too. Fair Play is the new documentary that's out. It's based on this book by Eve Rotsky. She's profiled in the documentary as well. What's sort of the, the main message you want everybody to take away from this about invisible work and, and roles in the home? Yes, thank you so much. So, so the, the book and the film are, are separate. The, it's inspired by the book. And I share that because I really want people to read the book and then I want people to go see the film because they're different. But the film really exposes all of the invisible work that women have historically shouldered and shines a light on a path forward where men step into more care at home and all the benefits to men stepping into care and domestic work at home. Um, and one thing that Eve talks about that worked in her relationship is this concept of feedback in the moment is toxic. Yes. This idea of when you're in the middle of it and you're really angry, if you scream at each other, that's not productive. Right. And they found some ways that were more productive. Yes, yes, no, exactly. What she's found and what she utilizes uh, is, again, obviously deep breaths, you know, t t creating space, giving each other space instead of feedback in the moment uh, because it is toxic. And then she and her spouse have 10 minute meetings a day, often walks. You know, I've always found that the best time to engage with my own children around sort of tense subject uh, issues is when everybody's calm. Maybe we're outside in nature on a walk, we're skiing, we're driving to school, whatever it is, but when people's emotions are lower and their cognition is higher. Right, and so for you, obviously, your husband's in a pretty high profile job mm -hmm. that's pretty stressful. You're also working as well. How do you make that work? It's a great question. I don't think it's easy in any household. Um, it, what was interesting when I was making Fair Play is people would say to me, uh, you know, Jen, no excuses. He still has to do 40% of the child care and domestic work at home. And so, you know, slowly and, uh, and gently, uh, you know, I was encouraging him to, you know, make meals on a Sunday night or which frankly is quite therapeutic um, and, and, you know, take more responsibility for bedtime or He's got it cleaning up the kitchen and keeping the house uh, pretty organized. Uh, because again, those, there are also benefits to that, right? So what we found is that when men do 40% of the domestic and child work at home, or they do 50 more minutes a day, that there are so many benefits to them. They're less likely to be on prescribed meds or antidepressants. They are happier. They have greater longevity. Um, they have better sex lives. Their marriages are more solid. The benefits to women are less depression, less stress, more leisure time, and frankly, that allows them to have seats at the tables of power and pursue their own careers. And then they're happier in their marriages. Have you noticed a change in him now that this has been more top of mind for you? Uh, yes. I, I've also noticed my husband is, he's such an intellectual and he really gleans a lot from all of my documentaries. I don't know if you, if you talk to him about masculinities or, you know, anything related to gender equity. He, he kind of pulls in what I talk about and expose and show in the films and he uses it in his own sort of, you know, um, thought leadership and also on the policy side. Right. And so he definitely understands. And again, he was raised by a single mom and therefore understands. And I, I do have to remind him sometimes that I am not a single mom <laughs> and I'm not Wonder Woman and I am not his mother. And that, you know, it, it, we are, you know, that there's more that he can do. And again, there's so much pressure because he really feels like he's responsible for and in some ways like a father to 40 million Californians that he has to take care of. Uh, but the kids are really good about letting him know when he's too busy or too focused on work and they kind of reel him back in. Um, and another thing that was really interesting that you, you talked about is talking to same-sex couples yes. and learning about their gender roles because they're clearly in a different position and what straight couples can learn from them. Yes. And there's so much to learn from same-sex couples who have learned to communicate and who also are like, well, look, you know, someone's got to do the care work in a same-sex male couple. Someone's got to do that. So I'm just going to do it. And this is like, and not be afraid or ashamed because it's part of being human. I think that this movie should be seen by men even more than it should be seen by women. I think there's a lot of lessons for men. Um, obviously, your sons that. 
are young. Yes. But one day they're going to watch this. Yes. What do you? They have. What, okay. <laughs> All right. So well, not the six-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> but what? It, what is the sort of lesson for Hunter and Dutch? What Thank do you, you want your kids to learn from from this in terms of being? better men. Thank you. The lesson I want them to learn, and it's try how I'm trying to socialize them at home, which is that care and caring relationships and nurturing and all that is sort of in the domestic sphere is part of being human. I think I mentioned before when Hunter was really little, I got him a doll because I was like, why should Montana have a doll and Hunter needs a doll? And granted, at one point Hunter probably ripped the head off, but, <laughs> but it's important to show him that like boys shouldn't be relegated just to violence and video games and action and dominance and aggression, but that care is part of being human. Frankly, I mean, and this is not a, a, a big leap here, if men, were and boys were socialized into more care we would have less violence in our society fact and i know people say oh that's just boys being boys yeah physical everything but girls are physical too we're all on a spectrum right, right? it's just how society kind of push pushes us and pressures us into these limiting gender roles yeah and you know the timing of this is quite something mm -hmm. this film coming out not necessarily what you anticipated, right on the heels of Roe v. Wade being overturned. We saw you at that press conference recently, sort of taking the lead for the state and in, in opening that up, and as emotional as we've seen you at a press conference. Yes. You know, I mean, the whole thing is crazy, and people don't understand, and, 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 I, and I appreciate that so many people are, so many progressives are leaning into uh, the redefining what pro-life is really about, and that's what we're doing in California. You know, pro-life is about prenatal care and universal preschool and universal after school and universal health care and, um, you know, taking care of foster kids and feeding, you know, universal meals and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, child care. Like, that's pro-life. It's not conception. Uh, but again, the, the, the folks on the far right, they're, they're missing is um, just this, they're, they're living in this silo, this evangelical conservative silo that ultimately um, is, it's, it's just pulling us back as a country to a time and a place where uh, we don't deserve to be and we're not gonna be because honestly, young women and fathers of daughters are awake now and they're woke and they're not gonna let us go back. And so I have so much hope because of that. And obviously California has a huge responsibility to well, lead. And to that point, I'll ask you the same question I asked the governor at Planned Parenthood. What is your message to the young woman in another state who is really scared right now? Yeah, come to California. <laughs> I mean, I, I want them to know that we see them, we hear them, we're here for them, we recognize their value, that they're uh, equal and they deserve to be treated equally and they deserve to have uh, control over their own, again, bodily autonomy and the fate and futures of their lives. And that, you know, there are states like California, Oregon, Washington, and others that value them. Uh, we're going to wrap things up with a little game we play on the issue is called okay. personal issues. Okay. This is 30 seconds rapid-fire questions to get to know you a little bit better. Okay. Um, so let's have fun with this first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Since you're a movie maker, favorite movie? Out of Africa. All right. What's your favorite TV show? Um, yeah. Well, it'll uh, be the issue is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I was going. I'm like old school there. Yeah. I don't, I don't even, you can yeah. go old school with all time favorite TV show. Uh, oh, Brady Bunch. Okay, there we go. <laughs> F favorite musical artist, all um, time. I love Sia. Oh, Sia's great. Uh, who is your favorite documentary filmmaker? I love Amy Ziering and Kirby Dick. Ah, oh, very nice. Um, what's your favorite way to relax? Walking in nature. And, uh, who and being with our, our animals and my children. Yeah, and you have a goat, right? We have goats. We have baby Nigerian dwarf goats, and they are the best pets ever, I promise <laughs> you. Oh, my God. The other night, I had them all in my lap, and it was just like, it was so healing and so therapeutic. They're just so sweet. They're like little babies, and they actually sound like babies when they cry. <laughs> <laughs> so Arnold Schwarzenegger has a mini donkey, and you've got baby goats. Yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and who is, your, who is your role model? Wow. All women. There isn't one. There's so many women. I, I glean little bits from everyone. Well, there's a lot that we all can learn from all the women in Fair Play. Yes. Um, uh, congratulations Thank on that. You. Jennifer Siebel Newsom, congratulations Thank on you. a movie that's really important for people to see. Thank you so much. 
Fair Play opens in select theaters and is available streaming on demand everywhere on July 8th.